Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about the My Hero Academia Chapter 39 sorry, 320 spoilers. Anyway, I've given the uh, I've given like a quick translation of read and I've also looked at uh, some of the images. Um, there I think there's some cool stuff going on here when I'm looking at the exact dialogue. It's interesting because some of the exact wording kind of points towards a particular conclusion. Now, the only one that I haven't read is the summary from Atsushi, so we're going to do that here on the video. And if Atsushi is lacking any kind of context, I will let you know from the Tumblr blog that did a fan translation. Anyway, chapter 320 is pretty much the we all come together to remind you of the good times type thing that happens in stories sometimes. Although in Hero Academia, they can't do the most perfect implementation of that idea so they have to do um, a different one we'll talk more about that when we get into the chapter proper because it's a nice talk about writing techniques uh, but let's go into the summary proper Deku versus class A the chapter starts and we see Ida with a serious expression thinking about how stubborn Izuku is um, Bakugo reveals to Izuku that they already know about his new quirks from the fourth fifth and sixth users he also makes fun of his looks so that's the first little layer of the summary not being what we really want here. So let me go in a little bit closer and talk about what exactly Atsushi was talking about. For Ida, Ida was thinking, and Ida has a pretty intense look here. It's also very interesting that Ida doesn't show up in the chapter after this point. Ida says, I know very well that you're not a person who will stop once you decide on something. So this is interesting. We know that he knows because he's... he's countered this before from Izuku but when I see this there are some lines in the chapter that make me think that the kids are going to be pushing towards some of them at least going with Izuku um, and again it's like you're not a person who will stop once you decide on something if Ida is saying that out loud that he should know that stopping Izuku from doing this might not be the best thing and given that the second user again is okay with Izuku having allies this is pro like here, it still looks like Ida wants to go with Izuku. Or it looks like he's more leaning towards that, given the things that he's said before as well. Now, when it comes to Bakugo, Bakugo's lines are him um, saying that Izuku's art style underwent a complete makeover and then calling him a nerd and all that kind of stuff. So it's just pretty much Bakugo being Bakugo. Some people I see like are kind of upset that Bakugo is being so abrasive. But like Izuku, there's... T talking to Izuku like a nice person isn't going to work in this particular situation, um, and Bakugo's angry. So I'm 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 quite I'm quite alright with this. I think this is pretty on point for Bakugo. Anyway, continuing with Atsushi's Twitter summary, uh, Deku thanks them for looking for him and activates Smoke Screen to run away, which Ochako recognizes as the sixth person's quirk, and she only recognizes it because Bakugo is the one that told him about it. Bakugo reacts with his own move, Shockwave Landmine, to clear the fog and resumes saying that Izuku now sees everyone as secondary since he is stronger. So just to like give you some more clarification, the Tumblr translation said Bakugo said something along the lines that everyone else is an extra, that kind of thing. Um, Koda sends many pigeons Izuku's way and yells that Nezu gave his approval so he can come back to UA. Izuku keeps saying he's sorry as he uses Black Whip to move away, but Seiro stops him by using his tape on it. He then tells Izuku that he was prepared for the quirk since he knows it. A uh, flashback of them is shown training together. Um, so there's a little bit more going on there, of course. When Seiro catches Black Whip, he only catches one strand of it. Like if Izuku really wanted to, because Izuku has like five other tendrils of Black Whip out from his back. He could have just created more Black Whips to circumvent Seiro. Seiro just pretty much caught the one strand. But in a fight where Izuku's exhausted, Izuku probably can't control that many strands of Black Whip. If we're just talking about mental fatigue. While mid-air, Jiro appears and attacks with her new move called Heartbeat Wall. So it's not just Jiro appears. Um, Tokoyami had Dark Shadow hoist Jiro into the air. What's interesting is that they chose not to use Ochako to just make some people float. Uh, yeah, pretty much weightless. Um, interesting choice. Tokoyami is doing quite a lot for this chapter. Uh, anyway, she says that even though he may not remember anymore, his advice during the culture festival was very useful and made her happy. We move on. Izuku keeps running until Ojiro grabs him with Tornado Tail Dance. He asks him if he remembers during the sports festival when he got mad because of his fight against Shinzo and says that he can't accept that Izuku is the only one getting hurt. So this line is another one of the interesting ones. So what Ojiro is saying, I can't overlook the fact that you're the only one becoming hurt with emphasis on the only. When I look at that, this is another one of the lines that's kind of saying... Look, if you're going to be doing this, we will go with you. We will get hurt along with you. 
Um, and that line leads into Izuku thinking that All for One's going to kill his friends. And that's why he wants to avoid it. And like, uh, here again, one of the important things to like really remember is that all these kids signed up for a life of danger. They're heroes. Every time they go out to fight a villain, they're in danger. We know this is a fundamental reality of Hero Academia society. It's happened to Kota's parents. We know this happens. It's not just all for one. So this is like one of the issues here is that it'd be nice to see if Izuku rational. I want to know how he rationalizes this. I want to know what exactly Izuku thinks about other villains other than all for one. Does he think his friends are invincible? I don't think he does when it comes to other villains. Anyway, Izuku states that while he's being pursued, everyone around him is in danger as he remembers what happened to Aizawa, Grand Torino, and Bakugo when they fought Shigaraki. With a villainous look on his face and sheer strength, he escapes once again. Um, Izuku... Okay, now this villainous look. The villainous look is also a look of desperation. Like, they're calling it villainous, but it's because that, that's the look of desperation. When you see it in the, in the chapter, you can decide whether or not you think it's villainous or desperate. Before Izuku can run away... Tokoyami pulls him into a building. Sato grabs Ojiro and Jiro in midair and screams to Izuku that he won't help him anymore with the candy apples to Eri if he continues to run from them. Um, so what Sato said is that he's not going to give Izuku any more red food coloring for the candy apples. That's that's more correct to what he says. Uh, Izuku mutters to himself that Eddie will be alright even if he's not around. So this is just Izuku not noticing how much how important he is to a child, and then he's taken by surprise by a machine created by Momo. It was supposed to make him sleep, but Izuku destroys it before the effect kicks in. So, the machine made by Momo is actually extreme. Here's the weird thing. They planned this machine out. That machine that they're talking to about is inside of the building ahead of time. The machine, the kids pretty much, from what this looks like, from the spoilers, the kids strategically were able to get Izuku exactly where they wanted him because Momo didn't, doesn't just make this machine out of nowhere. It was already there waiting to catch Izuku. So props to them for being able to control the fight so well that Izuku was put right where they wanted him to be. Um, and the machine is extreme. It, it, it is so extreme. It has like a mask component that comes down over Izuku's face. It's so robotic. Holy crap, now that Momo can make this, she should be able to make a power suit, man. That's actually really amazing. Anyway, Izuku destroys it before the effect kicks in. Uh, Kaminari then comes in, shoulder-hugging Izuku to prevent him from escaping, questioning him about one for all, being the only thing he thinks is important. Even if their hobbies are different, Kaminari still considers them friends and he wants Izuku to count on him. Shoji takes the opportunity and covers the two of them with a special tape created by Momo. The tape is just electricity. It's just an insulator tape. Um, it's, it's to support... Kaminari. Uh, Tokoyami then uses a new technique, Dark Shadow Ragnarok, Womb, and it's pretty much just a giant ball of Dark Shadow wrapping them in a sphere of darkness. Uh, Tokoyami, Tokoyami comments that the idea of using Dark Shadow in a defensive way came from Izuku himself during Calvary battle. Uh, Kaminari is still holding Izuku inside the Shadow Orb and asks him to take his ba a bath as soon as possible. Um, Atsushi might be making that seem a little, uh, a little rude. Um, what Kaminari says from another person's translation is that he's saying like, let's take a bath, let's go bathing. And this might just be more of a, hey, let's go to a hot spring together. You know, like, you know, Japan has communal baths and all that kind of stuff, right? It's just like, hey, yeah, let's let's take a dip together, that kind of thing. Um, that's more having to do with Japanese culture. We'll have to see what the final translation says for that one. Uh, Izuku breaks free while screaming, destroying a big portion of the building they were in. Tokoyami is impressed to see Dark Shadow being overpowered. And Dark Shadow was in full darkness, so you have full-on dark shadow. Uh, Izuku mask falls off in this portion. We see him holding back tears. He says that he knows his friends are generally worried about him to the point that Danger Sense hasn't been activated even once during the fight. But he needs them to understand that he's okay and has to keep doing this on his own. Shoto then stops Izuku using his heaven-piercing ice wall. He asks Izuku if his, if his burden doesn't even allow him to cry like a normal person. So this is in reference to the whole holding back tears. He says that Izuku should share this burden with all of them. And I'm not sure if you can tell but this is, again, another shot where we have to look at what the characters are saying. From the Tumblr translator, what they're saying, Shoto is saying, is then share it. Share that responsibility with us too. So again, we have another line where it's not just simply, we're going to stop you and take you back. This is another line saying, like, we will help you out. Um, so props to them. After that, we have Suyu being next to him saying that she won't let Izuku get away and that she's tired of crying while feeling helpless. Her friends should be allowed to tremble when they're in fear and cry when they're in pain. 
And then if Izuku's plan is to become a superhero like in the comics, then Class 1A will be by his side turning fiction into reality. Which is a really nice way of doing that, because like last night, the spoiler kind of sounded a little bit more rude. Um, when it comes to what they're saying... When, when it comes to Suyu, what she said in the Tumblr version is that if you intend to become a hero like those in the comics, then Class 1A won't let you go into that fantasy all alone. So again, another line saying like, hey, this is not just flat out stopping. This is compromise. Maybe going with Izuku, which I think is great. So there's a mixture of rhetorics coming in here. There's a, So far, it's a mixture of people being concerned about Izuku and other people being like, yo, we will go with you. Um, and of course... We don't. There are still some people who are missing Kirishima, Ida, Ochako. They haven't contributed to this battle yet. But given how much they prepared, that's really good. Uh, there was another line that I kind of forgot. It was with Momo. I got distracted by how amazing that machine was. But Momo says something pretty critical. Initially, everyone intended to accompany you. So this is in reference to what Ida had said when they went to confront Ned Zhu. Uh, but Momo saying, but now we're exercising the right to use our quirks under Endeavor and the other's cooperation. And what I want to just talk about is exercising the right to use their quirks. Yes, the kids do have the right to use their quirks because that is what the provisional license does. In the same way that Izuku had the right to use his quirk under Endeavor when he was working together with them. Izuku's not a vigilante. At least, well, now he kind of is. But before this, he wasn't. I just love that point. Um, I'm happy that Momo said they have a right to use their quirks. That might be also why, like, she was able to use, like, the sleep thing. Because Momo gets pretty caught up on those kind of stuff. Um, anyway, when you're looking at the spoilers, the devil is really in the lines that these kids are saying. Momo's pointing it out. Like, they intended to go with him at first. But uh, we might still get that. We might still see a situation where we could possibly do that. Um, that would be pretty neat if we actually end up um, with a few of them following Izuku. Uh, when Shoto brings up the heaven-piercing ice wall, Izuku, like, runs into it flat out. Like, he runs into it so hard that he ends up on the other side of the wall. Uh, that was pretty cool. And um, when... I think All Might's car is visible at like from a distance away... Which just doesn't look really good, but we'll talk more about that point in the final uh, chapter review on Sunday. Regardless, for this Hero Academia chapter, you know, it's cool. It's cool. I, I'm really happy with what we've gotten so far. I think the author is doing the best of what he has. Um, and I'm happy to see things. Now, uh, there are a few little details that, that come, came out with this as well. Uh, one thing that I will point out here... Uh, Horikoshi's comment from this week of Jump is the name Izuku originates from a verse of the poem, Be Not Defeated by the Rain. Um, so that was really interesting. And then the Tumblr translation, they included a little bit of that poem. And the last stanza goes, Called useless, so Deku, by all, neither praise nor bother. Such is the person I wish to be. So that's a, actually, a, like I haven't looked at the full poem, but that's an interesting way of, uh, of looking at the idea of being useless. Um, but if you look at it, like, not be neither praised nor bother. That is kind of what, Iz like, Izuku doesn't want to be a bother to people right now. Um, but this is an interesting way of making uselessness an ideal in terms of what exactly it means to be useless. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought about the spoilers down below. I'm going to call it here, just I'm not feeling super well. So I hope you enjoyed the quick spoiler walkthrough. Um, come back for Sunday. That's when we'll have the more thorough kind of talk about this. Or you can show up for the live stream. Um, if it's if you're watching this on Thursday night, uh, the live stream usually happens. Like, oh no, there's there's no real way of being able to tell you. Uh, it would usually happen like around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, if you want to join. Uh, but yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.